Welcome back to Newswire here on Sports Grid. Breaking news from the sports betting industry yesterday as DraftKings walks back a statement that was made a couple of weeks ago about adding a surcharge to winnings from sports bettors on their app. Let's bring in Jim Ghazali for the latest on that and also the update on Missouri's chances for having sports betting legalized this year. Jim, let's dive right into DraftKings. I, I mean, I, I guess it's better to right a wrong, but it was really hard to fathom how DraftKings could survive even taking you know a point one percent one percent out of sports betters' money when they win because betters have a choice to go other places. And in reading the tea leaves, did they just know that FanDuel was going to come out and say, "Hey, we ain't doing this. We already saw some other companies doing it too." I mean, the whole thing is just very bizarre to to make to by the way to, to have somebody say that publicly as opposed to a rumor. We could do rumors all day, but to make that declaration, uh, you know, uh, not the best look, I would say, just to be honest today. Yeah, and it was um, you know came after FanDuel uh, released their quarterly earnings uh, earlier in the afternoon yesterday, and then uh, DraftKings came out about two hours later and, and walked back that that surcharge, which, you know, got a lot of time and attention over the last, you know, 10 to to 12 days since DraftKings announced that during its quarterly earnings call about a week and a half or so ago. And, you know, I I think when you you look at it, the, the strategy for them, at least on the surface when they announced it, was in an in an attempt to combat the high tax rates that they have to pay in a handful of states. And, you know, perhaps deservedly so. They received a lot of flack for it on social media. And, you know, interestingly enough, Craig, I I come from uh, a tax communications world prior to my role here at at Legal Sports Report. So uh, the the fascination for me, not only in, in the surcharge itself, but also in the the communication strategy around charging your customers a little bit more, um, I thought was was rather interesting. And, and like you said, they did walk that back yesterday. Uh, and you know, FanDuel prior to to DraftKings uh, walking back this this surcharge, like I said, they released their quarterly earnings. They said that they were not going to be placing a surcharge on their customers. A couple other sports books came out during their quarterly earnings call in the last week, week and a half, also saying that they weren't going to be attaching a, a surcharge to winning bets on their customers. So it seemed like DraftKings was left on a little bit of an island. And, you know, they said in their statement, listening to feedback from from their customers, uh, that's, you know, probably in, in part, a large part uh, very true. As as I said, there was a, a lot of discourse on, on social media about it. But also, too, you have to think that them being the only sports book, major sports book, applying this, uh, this surcharge, or at least talking about applying this surcharge, because they said it wasn't going to start until January. Uh, you have to think them being on, on this island all by themselves, uh, coupled with the uh, general discontent from, from customers around the potential for this to to be enacted in, in a couple of high tax states uh, certainly led to that decision yesterday for them to forego this surcharge on winning betters for DraftKings. Yeah. And, and again, you know, hearing feedback, that's the nice way to put it, Jim. There was no one happy with having money <laughs> taken out of their wallet after winning. Come on, guys, get real. All right. So We are approaching the final quarter of the year in the fall, Jim, and we've gone through this entire year of sports betting, and it has been crickets for legalizing sports betting at a lot of the, you know, states that still do not have it legal, especially in Texas. We just haven't heard all that much. Missouri started to make some noise, and, you know, we were a little skeptical as to whether or not this would actually get done, but here we go, sports betting in November on the ballot in Missouri, Jim. Is there a chance that this goes through? If so, this will be our big sports betting state of the year. Yeah, and you know, to your point, Craig, this really isn't a time in the year where we're talking about states legalizing sports betting, but we have two potentially here with Missouri and, and Nebraska, which we'll get to in a couple of minutes. Uh, so yesterday, uh, the Secretary of State's office in, in Missouri uh, announced that the 
the path to legalizing Missouri sports betting will be on the ballot uh, upcoming in, in November. The voters there will get the chance to, to legalize sports betting after a couple of failed attempts in the legislature the last couple of years. The Secretary of State's office said that there was a sufficient number of signatures on a petition. Uh, they, the, the group backing this effort uh, gave in about 340,000 uh, signatures, mm -hmm. and they needed 170,000 to be uh, verified. So, you know, obviously they're they're taking a a large sample and you know running some percentages, and and that all uh, came to fruition. So, Missouri betters will get the opportunity to legalize sports betting on the ballot uh, in in November. Now, this process has been been going on since the fall. Uh, DraftKings, FanDuel, uh, both involved in this process. They've they've spent about six and a half million dollars on this effort to get that legalizing sports betting question on the ballot um, in Missouri. So, how this would work be a ten percent tax rate on uh, sports betting revenue and the, the casinos and the professional sports teams in the state would have the ability to have in-person and online wagering. There's 13 casinos, six sports teams, and the State Gaming Commission would also be allowed to issue two untethered sports betting licenses there. And this state, Missouri, has always been a, a hot topic over the last couple of years. Uh, the, the push to legalize sports betting there passed the House in both 2022 and 2023, but ultimately met its demise in the Senate with Senator Denny Hoskins, who was trying to tie it to a, a VLT, a video lottery terminal um, bill that, that just didn't gain much support. So, uh, and it didn't really even come up all that much uh, this last cycle in 2024. So, uh, couple of failed attempts through the legislature, but now we see uh, sports betting uh, will land on the ballot in Missouri coming up in November. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, maybe this Denny Hoskins needs to take a day off the day that they decide to do uh, this, this, uh, this balloting. All right, uh, let's real quick, we have two minutes left, Jim. Let's get to Nebraska. Not quite the same story here, but similar. They're trying to get online sports betting going. Yeah, you're exactly right. They already have in-person sports betting at a handful of casinos, but there's a special session going on in Nebraska right now. Uh, they're, they're looking for ways to reduce the property tax burden in the state, and some lawmakers are, are pushing uh, online sports betting as a way to do that. Uh, some, some brief mention of uh, legalizing online sports betting yesterday in the legislature a constitutional amendment did pass out of committee uh, earlier this week on Monday. There is a companion bill that is still sitting in committee. Um, and, you know, really the, the special session that's going on right now, uh, it seems like based on the conversations could could end at, at any moment and could go on, uh, you know, in, in, in perpetuity, it seems, uh, just based on the, the conversations. But uh, lawmakers there looking for ways to reduce the property tax burden on its residents, on its citizens. Uh, some have pushed this online sports betting bill. Conversations happening today. It's been mentioned. Uh, no definitive answer, uh, but you know we're we're covering it uh, at Legal Sports Report. So when there's news to share in Nebraska during this special session, you'll be sure that we have it for you, Craig. All right. Thanks so much, Jim, for coming on the show. We'll keep an update on that. And we'll talk again soon. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Greg.